Good morning, and welcome to the Power in the Word broadcast of the Pilgrim Progress Missionary Baptist Church, where Rev. Gerald Parker Sr. is our wonderful pastor. Our church motto is, let's do it God's way. Expect a blessing. Let's listen. And it says in St. Mark, the second chapter, uh, starting at verse 1, and again, he entered into Capernaum after some days. And it was noised that he was in the house. And straightway, many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Yeah, I could go on and on with that. But this morning, just for a few minutes, we're going to look from this subject of Jesus' power to forgive sin. All right. It's a possibility that some of you would say, well, the greatest benefit of being a child of God is the joy that God has given us as a result of being saved. Some of you would probably say the greatest benefit of being a child of God or the greatest benefit of being a Christian is the peace. Now that I have accepted Jesus Christ and he adopted me into the family, now I have peace. And that, Pastor Parker, is the greatest benefit of being a child of God. That's the greatest benefit of being a Christian. And some of you might say, well, the greatest benefit of being a Christian is I don't do what I used to do. I don't do it, and there are times that I have a desire to do it, but there's someone within me that prevents me from doing what I used to do. And someone else might say, well, the greatest benefit of being a child of God and being a Christian is the love. The love of the Father, that's the greatest benefit. But my brothers and sisters, I want to share with you today that although those are great benefits of being a child of God, but I stand here this morning to announce to all of you that the greatest benefit of being a child of God is the fact that our sins have been forgiven. And so what I want to do just for a minute, I want to give you the scenario and the context of which led Jesus to declare to a man that his sins were now forgiven. Come go with me. Come, come on, come on. Come on and go with me to chapter 2, verse 1. Because in chapter 2, verse 1, St. Mark gives us the place and the time when Jesus uttered those beautiful words, Son, thy sins be forgiven. Here in chapter 2, verse 1, it says, And again he entered into Capernaum uh, after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. My brothers and sisters, I hope you stick with me. Jesus was now back in Capernaum. Those of you who've been with us for a few weeks now and a few months, you know that after Jesus preached his first sermon in Nazareth, 
he experienced church hurt and the people in the church tried to kill him and he had to run from he had to run from Nazareth back to Capernaum and it was in Capernaum that he set up his headquarters while he was there in Capernaum my brothers and sisters the he had a great ministry and after that and last week when he was in Galilee all around Galilee guess what he did he healed a man that had leprosy were y'all with me a son a few sons ago when this man this man full of leprosy came up to Jesus and said you know what Lord if you will you have the power to make me clean Boy, I, 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 I still shot over that for the fact here was a brother that had leprosy but he came to Jesus humbly and he said if you will if is your will you have the power hallelujah to make me clean and then she just told that brother, don't tell anybody what I've done. After he healed the brother and cleansed him, he told that brother, now you go show yourself to the priest and don't tell anyone what I've done. Don't you tell anyone, don't you tell one person what I've done. But guess what happened? When that brother left Jesus, guess what? He, he, he disobeyed. Not only he didn't tell one, he told everybody. He disobeyed. And because of his disobedience, the scripture says in the last part of, of Mark 1, Jesus had to resort to going into the wilderness instead of going back into the synagogue because of the disobedience of this leper. Jesus had to resort to going into the wilderness instead of the church house because there were too many people. And I just want to say this right now, my brothers and sisters, before we go into the text for today. Your secret disobedience can affect the whole church. Sometimes, sometimes I, I found this out. Sin, your, your personal sin can, can put a hindrance into the body of Christ. And so because of this, Jesus had to leave Capernaum and go out to the different cities in Galilee. But guess what? In chapter 2, verse 1, it says, after a few days, guess what happened? Jesus came back to Capernaum. That's where he is. Look, I want you to see this. I want this picture to be, I want to paint this picture so you can see that Jesus has the authority. He has the power to forgive sin. And it says here, and again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. When Jesus had already started an uproar before he left Capernaum, and now he's back in town, and the scripture says, and it was noise. That word noise, the Greek word is a kuo. It means that when he got back into town, it was told that everybody, guess what? That man that healed the people a few days ago, guess what? I just heard the news. He's back in town. And not only is he back in town, look at verse 1, it says, and that he was in the house. Look at me now. It didn't say that Jesus was in his house. Y'all got to look at this now. He was in the house. You see, I've come to tell you that when he went to Capernaum, he did not, oh yeah, by the way, I need to let y'all know that Jesus never had an address. You look at me now. I said Jesus never had an address. Those of you who have fine homes and, and you have matriculated fine manicured lawns and, and you've got a, a three-car garage and you got all those rooms and, and you feel good about your vicinity where you stay, I want you to know right now, Jesus never had an address. Foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of Man had no place to lay his head. And the house he was staying in was Simon Peter's house. And so I want to remind you here today, I got to tell you, I got to say this. Those of you who feel that, 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 that you've been cheated uh, in life and that you don't have all of the material things that you, you think you ought to have, I want to remind you today that Jesus didn't have an address. And when he got ready to pay his taxes, he had to go fishing and get money out of a fishing mouth. When he got ready, when he got ready to give the Lord supper, he had to borrow an upper room. When he went into Jerusalem, he had to borrow a donkey to ride, on, ride in. Can I tell you something here? Don't base the success of your life 
by how much money is in, your, in the bank. You better look at me now. Don't do that. Don't do that. I know you look around and you see people that got all of these things. They got this and that. But let me tell you now, I, 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 there are some things that money cannot buy. And we ought to thank God that we have the stuff that money can't buy. Don't get me wrong. I like to have a little change in my pocket. But guess what? When I don't have some change in my pocket, I still have Jesus. And it was noise that he was in the house. And in verse 2, it says, and straightway, many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. In other words, once, look at me now, once the people heard that Jesus was in the house, guess what they did? They ran to the house where they thought Jesus was. And immediately, they wanted to see Jesus in the house. Now, this is a point I need to make. Jesus had a habit of going to the synagogue during the Sabbath. And they knew that on the Sabbath day, Jesus would be in the, in the synagogue preaching and teaching. But guess what? It was not on the Sabbath day. And they couldn't wait till the Sabbath day to see Jesus. So they went into a, another person's house to see Jesus. I got to let you know. And guess what? When they heard he was in there, immediately they ran, hallelujah, they ran to see Jesus in the house. It's amazing to me how that uh, when we hear that Jesus is in the house, that should cause us to run immediately into, into this house. People all the way around jam-packed couldn't get in and they couldn't get out. But yet in the midst of that, the scripture says, and Jesus preached the word unto them. Ooh, I, 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 it, it made me happy uh, to hear that Jesus had announced uh, in St. Luke 4 that he had been called to preach. And, I, you know, he didn't, he didn't wait. Uh, to, to the Sabbath day to go to the synagogue to preach. He preached right there. You know, you got some brothers uh, who call themselves preachers that don't really preach until they're behind a pulpit on Sunday morning. I, 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 tell, I tell a lot. I, 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 I have a tendency to I do a little counseling with pastors and preachers. And I've heard some preachers say, well, you know, Pastor Parker, you've been preaching a long time. I said, yes. But, you know, I... I, I I, I haven't got I, the Lord. I haven't, I haven't been preaching lately. I haven't got too many preaching engagements to preach, and I, I don't want to have the Lord fired me. You know what I tell those fellas? I tell those fellas, you ain't nothing but a professional preacher because you think the only time you're supposed to preach is when you get an invitation behind a pulpit. You know, no, as you go, you ought to preach. You don't have to wait to get an invitation from a pastor, and then you come in, get behind a pulpit, have your Stacey Adams on, cross your legs, wait for somebody to sing Amazing Grace, and then you stand up, open the Bible. No, no, as you go, you preach. Preach in the church house. Preach at your house. Preach wherever you go. As you go, preach in season. Preach out of season. And that's what Jesus did. He didn't wait to go to the synagogue. He preached right there in Simon Peter's house. And he preached the word unto them. Now look at verse 3. Ooh. While he's preaching in the house, the door was open. Lord, help me with this. The house was jam-packed. Couldn't receive one more person. And outside in the door, people all around. And in verse 3, I see something happening. In verse 3, behind the crowd, I see five men coming toward the house. Five. I, I, I see five men. And, and what's so strange about this, uh, I, 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 there are five men and four men are carrying a bed. And, and, and as I look at these four men carrying this bed or carrying this stretcher, there's a man in the stretcher. So what I see here, while Jesus is preaching and the crowds all around coming from behind, I see five men coming, four walking and one laying in a stretcher on their way to the house where Jesus was. 
And as I looked there, it says, and they came unto him. They were trying to get to Jesus. Uh, one sick of policy. Pitiful, miserable brother. No activity in his arms. No activity in his legs. He had palsy. Yeah, he was paralyzed from his neck down. But yet, these four men who could walk, they had compassion on that brother. Yeah, they had to have compassion. Somebody say, were they his sons? I don't know. Were, they his, were, there that, were, they, were these men his four sons who carried him to CJ? I don't know. Were they his neighbors? I don't know. But I'll tell you what, one thing I can say about them. They were his friends. Because a friend in need is a friend indeed. And they had compassion on that brother. They realized he could not walk. And they said, you know what? I got to get, I got to close it. You know what? They said, you know what? We know someone that can heal this brother. Let's come together and take him to Jesus. I'm trying to help you here. And so what they did was these four men who could, who could walk decided to come together with their compassion. And they came together and they took the man in his bed, one at each man on each side of the stretcher. And they started walking toward the house where Jesus was. And can I tell you something? That's the job of the church. Our job is to look out for people that, that are palsied, look out for people who are paralyzed, look out for people who are sinful, and our job is for us to come together and take these people to Jesus. And I can see them now, full of compassion, cooperating one another, and they were conscientious, and they were taking him to Jesus. But you know what I found out? I found out that when you make up your mind to try to get to Jesus, there will always be some obstacles. They did get there. I said they did get there. And, 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 and it said they came unto Jesus in the way he was. And it said when they would come nigh unto him, they could not come nigh unto him for the press. Oh, okay, whatever. They were on their way to Jesus, but when they got to Jesus, they couldn't get near Jesus. Y'all didn't get that, did you? Y'all didn't get it. That's all right. They, 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 they took him to Jesus, but because of the press and because of people, they couldn't get him near. You see, there are a lot of people that, 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 that have come to Jesus and they are members of the church, but they are not near Jesus. You got a lot of folks as members of the church, and some of y'all sitting in that pew right now. You are there, but you are not near Jesus. You just simply got the title of a church member. Are you really near Jesus? Somebody say he's talking about me. I might not be talking about you. If you took that personal, you were one of the ones that's not near Jesus. You came to church, but you're not near Jesus. Stumping block in your way. People. Pride. Sin. And so what they did was, we can't get this brother near Jesus. And so when they could not come nigh to Jesus for the press, they said, we cannot get him in here the conventional way. I got to close this thing. So we're going to do it because we are determined. We're not going to stop now. We're not going to let anybody, and we're going to let this crowd, we're not going to let anybody keep us from taking this man to see Jesus. So what they did was they went around the side of the house and climbed the steps, and they got on this flat roof. While Jesus was preaching, all of a sudden, he felt part of the roof falling on his head. People start ducking. What's going on here? What's going on there? Them brothers up there tearing that roof up because they had a they had a brother they wanted to come in contact with Jesus. It wasn't their roof. They didn't ask anybody, can we tear up your roof? And they finally placed him in Jesus' presence. Now, pick on progress, look at me now. And this is what got me in verse 5. This blew me away. It said, when Jesus 
saw their faith. Yeah, yeah, I, don't, I, that, that, it, I don't care. It don't have to excite you, but it sure excited me. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, 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 he. There, there, there is no record of them saying anything. There, there is no record of this, of this per paralyzed man saying anything. But somehow Jesus saw their faith. How could Jesus see their faith? Because I'm going to tell you why. Faith without works is dead. And so he saw the fruit of their faith because when you have faith, Faith always operates in works. If you have faith, then your work will show that you have faith. Faith does not sit down. Faith works. He saw their faith, and when he saw their faith, he said, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Yeah, yeah. Somebody's a hold Wait, 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 wait. Hold it. Oh, I'm confused now. He saw their faith. Why did he talk to just the paralyzed man? Well, Y'all don't understand. Maybe you do. It took me a while to get that. All five of them had faith. Four of them had faith to believe that Jesus could heal him of his palsy. And the palsy man, the one that was paraplegic, he had two kinds of faith. He, he, he believed that not only could Jesus heal him, of his palsy, but he also believed that Jesus had the power to forgive him of his sins. And because of that faith, he said, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Now, look, look, pick up, look at me now. I know I've been up here a long time, but look at me. He never, he did not address. The, per, the paralysis first. He, he didn't address the, the boy, the man's body first. That was a secondary need. That brother, his body did need healing, but Jesus realized that above your body being healed, your soul have to be healed. So he dealt with the boy's soul before he dealt with his body. He said, thy sins, everybody said, thy sins. Thy sins be forgiven me. And guess what? While he was told that, brother, thy sins be forgiven, that there were some critics in the crowd. Oh, yeah, by the way, come, come a little closer. Come a little closer. I've been preaching, pastoring a long time. And guess what I found out? I already knew this, but I, I, it's even, it's even uh, true today. Whenever you have a group of people coming together, you're going to have some critics in the group. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> some critics here today. I don't know who you are. Are you a critic? All you see is what's wrong. You don't see what's right. You don't come here to hear the word. You come here to criticize. But that's you. That's your makeup. That's your makeup. You can't help it. You don't come to see Jesus. You come to criticize. And if it's tearing you up right now, it's because it's the truth. These so-called self-righteous scribes had their legs crossed. Did you hear? What, and, and they were thinking in their minds. Did you hear what he just said? He had the nerve to tell that brother, I almost to y'all, that his sins are forgiven. That, that was the thing in their mind. In other words, don't he know that nobody can forgive sins but God? They were thinking that in their mind. And so if he said that, he is blaspheming. He, he's pretending to be God. They, they were criticizing in their minds. But see, the point is, Jesus had power that I don't have. He was able to read their minds. When he told that boy, thy sins be forgiven, he read their minds. And he told them this. Which one is easier to say? Thy sins be forgiven? Or is it easier to say, take up, arise, take up your bed, and walk? But then he said this, 
you, you, they, they misunderstood. In other words, they said, it, it, how, how could he say thy sins are forgiven? Only God can say that. They were right, but they didn't realize that Jesus was God. They didn't realize that he was God in the house. Hallelujah, he was God in the house, Pilgrim Progress. And then he says, I'm going to tell you right now. I know what's on your mind. I know what you're thinking because I'm God. But let me tell you right now. You got a problem with me telling that brother thy sins are forgiven. But let me tell you right now, which one is easier to say thy sins be forgiven or to say take a rise, take up your bed and walk? He said, let me tell you right now. Let me tell you right now. Let me tell you right now. Let me tell you what I'm going to do. Since you don't believe that I have the power to forgive sins, I'm going to look right now because uh, uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let this, I'm going to uh, uh, command this brother to take up his bed and walk. And once you see him take up his bed and walk, then you'd realize if I have the power to tell him to take up his bed and walk, then you already know I already had the power to forgive him of his sins. See, see, I, I, I'm going to do that now. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to let you know I'm, if, so that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. And he said, he said to the sick apostle, he said, hey, brother, arise. Take up thy bed and go thy way into the house. I say, I say, arise. Pick up the, the, the bed that you would carry it in. Now pick up that bed. Rise and go on to the house. I said, take up that bed, rise, take that bed, and carry it to the house. I say, rise, get up, take that bed, and go to the house. And guess what that paralyzed man did? When he heard the master command him to get up, he said, I've never gotten up all my life. But since he told me to get up, I believe he'll give me the power to get up. And guess he got up. Picked up the bed, walked out of the house, on his way home. The same bed that he was carried in, now he was carrying the bed. <laughs> he left the house crippled. He left the house paralyzed. But, but when he came back to the house, he was carrying his bed on his shoulder, rejoicing. And that's what Christ can do. You might not drive a Bentley. You might not have the finest home. But guess what? Your soul has been set free. And that same Jesus, yes, sir. Yeah, that same Jesus that, that told that brother to rise up, go home. That same Jesus died on the cross. Yeah, yes, he did. I said he died. He died in the early Sunday morning. He rose early Sunday morning and he rose from the grave. And guess what? Now our sins have been forgiven. Thank you for viewing the Power in the Word broadcast. If you would like more information about Pilgrim Progress Baptist Church services and ministries, please visit us at ppbc1912 at aol.com or call our church office at 501-372-4422. Where our efficient church secretary will be happy to assist you. Join us again on Wednesday and or Sunday mornings at 5 a.m. Be blessed.